Imagine you're sitting in a special collections reading room waiting for the librarian to bring you a beautiful illuminated manuscript. You don your white gloves as the book is placed in front of you and you begin to turn the pages. And then you wake up in a cold sweat. What a nightmare. You could have damaged that precious book. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Bite Sized Book History. I'm your host, Allie Alvis, who you may know better as Book Historia. I'm a book historian and rare book cataloger at antiquarian book dealer Type Punch Matrix. Despite what you may see in fiction and in generally well-meaning media, library best practice is to use clean, dry hands when handling rare materials. This is for several reasons, all aimed at preserving the collections. Gloved hands lack the sense of touch and dexterity of a bare hand. They can accidentally lead to damaging a book if the glove catches on a fragile page edge, or a dropped book if the gloves prove to be slippery. Cotton gloves in particular have a tendency to lift fragments from pages, including pigments. Their fibers can catch in cracks that are invisible to the naked eye, further damaging friable pigments and inks, for example, those in illuminated manuscripts. This also means that cotton gloves retain a lot of dirt, making them not so clean after all. In the same vein, gloves can cause the hands to sweat, and this moisture can penetrate the fabric of the gloves, ending up on the very books that they were meant to protect. But what about nitrile or surgical gloves? Their rubbery texture can make them a little bit tacky, leading to some of the same problems that arise with cotton gloves. Conservators have studied the effect of clean hands on most rare materials. Kathleen Baker and Randy Silverman wrote an excellent article on this topic which gives more details. I've linked it in the description below. There are a number of notable exceptions to the no gloves in the reading room rule. The first is with photographic material, including film, negatives, and the photos themselves. Even trace amounts of oils can mar them, since chemistry is so important to the photographic process. Another exception is books that have a lot of metal fittings, such as chains or furniture, and especially treasure bindings. As anyone who has had any experience with antique silver knows, Many metals don't require a lot of encouragement to become tarnished. But unlike your precious heirloom silver, it's very difficult to polish the tarnish out of a book without damaging the rest of the book. A particularly important exception is when working with books with toxic elements, such as those I mentioned in my video about poisonous books. In this case, the gloves are more about protecting you than the collections. But even here, cotton gloves are shunned. This is where nitrile gloves shine, not least because they can be thrown away when you're done using them. So how do you handle a book safely? Simple. Clean dry hands. Just give them a wash with hand soap and water before entering the reading room and make sure they're dry before going through any rare materials. Hand sanitizer, though, can actively damage materials, so stick to good old traditional hand washing. Where does the white glove misconception come from, then? Kathy Baker and Randy Silverman speculate that the idea of white gloves being a reading room necessity originates as recently as the 1990s. They point to canny vendors and archival supply catalogs praising the virtue of gloves in order to sell them. As early as the Middle Ages, people were aware that clean hands were best for handling books. Benedictine monks in the scriptorium of Tegernsee in Bavaria were commanded to wash and dry their hands before copying or reading manuscripts. Another medieval source cited by the British Library notes a parishioner chided for her use of gloves when reading. Noted 17th century book collector Nicolas Fouquet was said to keep a pile of white gloves in the anteroom of his library. But he is very much an isolated instance. We don't really see the widespread use of white gloves until the late 19th century. And even then, glove use was specifically intended for photographic collections, which, as I already mentioned, are more sensitive to oils than most library collections. While librarians have long understood the white glove menace, they're beloved by writers, filmmakers, and media outlets. This is because showing a person donning gloves before handling something is efficient visual shorthand for old, valuable object. 
If they show gloved hands, they don't have to spend valuable narrative space on explaining the importance of the thing being handled, even if it makes non-fictional rare book folks cringe. There have been a number of instances where libraries and archives have been pressured into using white gloves while on screen. This video won't be naming any names, but several reputable media outlets are known for insisting that librarians wear gloves when handling their own materials. This is possibly to cut down on viewers calling said media outlet to yell at them for not handling materials correctly. This is how pervasive the white glove myth is. But librarians and rare book professionals are also regularly chided with varying degrees of intensity for not wearing gloves while handling their collections. It's one of the comments I get most often on my social media posts. So if you see somebody extolling the virtues of white gloves, let them know that glove free is the way to be. Occasionally you may come across a special collections reading room that still mandates glove use for all materials. That is their prerogative. Special collections are run by trained professionals who always run the risks and benefits when creating their reading room standards. But most large libraries, including the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives, the Beinecke Library, the National Diet Library of Japan, and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France mandate only clean, dry hands in the reading room. That does it for this episode of Bite-Sized Book History. I hope this gave you a new perspective on why rare book libraries work the way they do. Feel free to share it next time you see somebody crying out for white gloves when handling rare books. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon channel to support these videos. I'll see you next time, and remember, don't bite your books. Mm -hmm.